Lifecycle assessment, or LCA, is a methodology that scrutinizes the environmental impact of a product or service across its entire life cycle. LCA emerged in the early 1960s as an industry tool to optimize manufacturing systems, supply chains, and market behavior. LCA's prominence diminished during the 1970s and 1980s, overshadowed by the focus on toxic substance control and hazardous waste remediation. However, the resurgence of global environmental concerns, particularly greenhouse gas emissions, has reignited interest in LCA development and its broader implications. An LCA report analyzes a process that can be broken down into the following four general stages. One, raw material acquisition. This stage includes the extraction and processing of raw materials. It accounts for the environmental impact of activities such as mining, forestry, and agriculture. Two, production. This stage includes the manufacturing of the product or service. It accounts for the environmental impact of activities such as energy consumption, waste generation, and water use. Three, use. This stage includes the actual use of the product or service. It accounts for environmental impact of activities such as fuel consumption, packaging waste, and emissions from the use of the product. And four, end of life. This stage includes the disposal or recycling of the product or service. It accounts for the environmental impact of activities such as landfill disposal, incineration, and recycling. Each step incorporates the transport of materials within and between stages, which has its own set of impacts. The environmental impacts of a product or service can vary significantly based on the stage of its life cycle. For instance, the production of aluminum products exerts a much greater environmental impact than their actual use. In contrast, the majority of life cycle impacts for gasoline vehicles occur during their usage. Consequently, conducting a full life cycle assessment for a product or service is not always necessary. In many cases, it is sufficient to concentrate on the life cycle stages that are of particular interest. To address this variability, different scopes of LCAs have been developed to provide a nuanced understanding of environmental impacts. We will define a few of the most common types. The cradle to grave approach encompasses the entire material and energy cycle of a product or material, excluding recycling and reuse. Cradle to cradle integrates the entire material cycle covering recycling and reuse along with other stages. Cradle to gate focuses on material acquisition, manufacturing, refining, and fabrication up to the factory gate. However, it does not include the actual product use and end of use life phases. Gate to gate narrows its, into its focus a specific additional process or new process or material within the product chain, providing a partial life cycle assessment. Well to wheel is a specialized LCA that evaluates the energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions associated with fuel production and utilization, particularly in transport vehicles. So let's take a closer look at how we subdivide these different sections. This image shows the boundaries of cradle, grave, and gate so that we can get a visual comparison of the range of analyses of the different scopes. We can see how the cradle to grave approach considers the complete material and energy cycle from extraction of the raw material of a product. However, it excludes along the bottom the recycling and reuse of that product. Cradle to cradle integrates the entire material cycle, including recycling or reuse. Cradle to gate focuses on material acquisition, manufacturing and refining and, and fabrication up to the factory gate, and it excludes the product use and end of life phases. And finally, gate to gate, narrows its focus to a specific process or material within the product chain. 
which is why it's considered a partial view of the life cycle assessment. Now that we have compared the portions that an LCA may analyze, let's discuss the methods of building an LCA. Over time, the LCA methodology has been refined and standardized, encapsulating four steps, uh, scoping, inventory analysis, life cycle impact assessment, and interpretation. The first three can be thought of as being done sequentially, meaning, for example, that the goal and scope are first defined before doing the inventory analysis. And the inventory analysis is done before doing the, uh, the uh, impact assessment. And much like writing a paper, after learning more about the next step in the process, it may require readjusting the previous step. But overall, this is a stepwise process. However, interpretation must occur at each step of the process. The initial step, scoping, has been touched upon briefly already. We looked at the different scopes that an LCA may look at. This is the first step because we need to know what is important to analyze. Different scopes involve clearly defining the study's purpose, the specific product or service under assessment, and the system boundaries. For instance, if a company develops a novel method for producing steel rods that, aside from the manufacturing process, exhibits no noticeable functional discrepancies from other existing steel rods that use different methods of production, it would be illogical to invest time and resources in conducting a cradle-to-grave examination to determine if the new steel rod manufacturing process is less environmentally harmful than traditional methods. Instead, the company could focus solely on the manufacturing process, resulting in a gate-to-gate -gate LCA scope. The inventory analysis follows the scope definition, entailing the comprehensive identification and quantification of all energy and material inputs and outputs across the production, use, and disposal phases. The third step, impact assessment, assigns environmental impacts to the identified energy and material flows using indicators like greenhouse gas emissions, acidification, and eutrophication. Scope is highlighted as a pivotal initial step, defining the assessment's purpose, system boundaries, and specifying data and assumptions. The inventory analysis, the second step, involves collecting information on energy and material use at each st stage of the manufacturing process. It often involves tedious data collection and evaluation. The third step, life cycle impact assessment, sometimes abbreviated LCIA, estimates potential environmental impacts by grouping inventory items based on common impacts and converting them into reference units. This step involves various impact categories, such as global warming potential and ozone depletion potential, as examples. The interpretation step is an ongoing process throughout the methodology, where conclusions about the environmental impacts are drawn. The methodology diagram illustrates how these steps relate to each other in a general way. In the manufacturing industry, Complex processes often involve numerous steps. This can require a thorough inventory analysis. This figure illustrates the manufacturing process for a bar of soap, which is generally made from animal fats. Shown here is tallow and lye, uh, which is its chemical name uh, for lye is sodium hydroxide. I've outlined these ingredients of the process in the red boxes. However, you can see that it takes a lot more energy and materials in the manufacture of soap than just here's sodium hydroxide and tallow. The inventory analysis demands meticulous documentation of material and energy inputs and outputs for each step. However, some steps may have a negligible impact on the overall environmental footprint of the product. For instance, machinery that is replaced only once every decade or so might be excluded from the inventory analysis due to its minimal contribution. And this brings us to a functional unit.
A functional unit is a quantifiable measure that serves as the basis for comparing the environmental performance of two or more products, processes, or services. During the inventory analysis step, defining the functional unit of comparison is essential. The functional unit serves as the foundation for comparing products, or processes, or services, and it must ensure that the final assessment delivered is equivalent. Defining a functional unit may seem like a straightforward task, but it can pose significant challenges. For instance, choosing one bar of soap as a functional unit for comparison may not be adequate when comparing it to liquid hand soap or a combination product like body wash. Considering alternative functional units is necessary. Suggestions include using numbers of washings as a functional unit or considering the concentration of cleaning agent per average use. Soaps often contain additives and attributes that influence consumer preferences, even if they don't directly affect cleaning effectiveness. Factors like scents, lotions, colors, and even the shape of the soap bar can impact the quantity sold, which in turn affects the environmental impact. The chemical used for additives can have varying environmental impacts, factors like scent and color. While not directly affecting cleaning effectiveness can still influence the overall environmental footprint of a soap product. So overall, we can see that finding a functional unit is a difficult process, but allows us to compare and contrast different uh, processes or products. And now that we have looked at what an LCA is and how LCAs are utilized, in the next section, we will examine methods for assessing environmental impacts.